from Western Australia. I know our friends from uh, the various institutions that uh, have a contribution to the Angry Women League project over the years. Uh, first, I must say, it's always an to speak to you. Thank you for making my speech, so I'm going to freelance a little. Um, I think uh, uh, projects like the Angry Women League project are essential to the, the relationship between Australia and Indonesia. Not only because of the, the areas that they're working in, particularly in, uh, in the economy and how the world is taxed, but because they provide a, a non government uh, opportunity for Indonesians and Australians to come together and discuss some, some of the very difficult issues that confront both of our, our countries. I think you see that uh, challenge uh, at present, both in looking at the uh, commodity prices, how we reposition ourselves going forward uh, in the future to deal with uh, that change in the economy. I think if you look back to 1965, the time the project started, uh, uh, for Australians, a uh, uh, perplexing time in Indonesia. What was happening in our, in our largest neighbour, uh, over to the north, what might, be, what might become of it in the future? And if you look at Australia, you saw very little knowledge of Indonesia, not only in the economy, but more broadly. Uh, so, a uh, uh, time of uh, vision for those who decided to start the project, and particularly like Sarant, but those around him. Um, at that time, there were very few supporters of the project. I'm happy to say that uh, as a predecessor for my own department, uh, what was then called uh, the Department of External Affairs, uh, was uh, very supportive of the project starting, and as uh, Katie from the uh, 80s, we put some money into it. Um, I can't see us uh, uh, certainly losing interest in the project if we go forward, because I think the, the challenge that confronts us both now uh, is not in our domestic economies to be frank, but how we work together to make take the best opportunities of the, the regional and global economy before us. I think in the past, uh, both Australia and Indonesia and the uh, uh, OPEC have been community members, which we have seen from that to politicians, have been guilty of the same, of the same error. And that is the talking how we trade with each other, rather than how together we trade with the rest of the world. I think it's uh, no secret these days that the, uh, the, the money to be made in uh, international trade is finding, finding a place in the global supply chain. I think uh, Indonesia and Australia need to work much harder to identify the comparative advantages that we each have, how we can bring that together and, and sell it to the rest of the world. So I think that's one advantage of the way we be supportive of the uh, Indonesian project and the work that it does. But more broadly, too, I think if we get past this uh, mechanism of uh, the whole world, it's a view of the relationship between the global coast, you know, full of ups and downs, I think it will be build uh, more common interests between us. I think uh, the economy and business and so forth presents the best opportunity for that. Uh, you'll have seen a change in our narrative this year from Australia and the way we talk about Indonesia. At least I hope we start to see a change in the narrative. And it's a move away from uh, focusing only on uh, trade goods. I think trade goods will always be important to both of us, but I think the future for us is in uh, investment in both directions of our economies and in hydration services. Uh, in Australia, about 75% of the economy is services, and I have an independent policy around our services. In Indonesia, I think services are about 40% of the economy now, will grow over time as Indonesia becomes, uh, becomes richer. I think that the opportunities in both of us in services uh, and in uh, investment uh, is important. Um, if you look at some of the key policies of uh, the Indonesian government, uh, food security is my, uh, is my, my favorite example. Uh, there are many areas in which self sufficiency is simply not possible. But the best way to you know, encourage food security, I think, in some of those areas is to have uh, integration with Australia. It's one of the reasons, for instance, that we're encouraging uh, Indonesian investment in Australia and business. I think that uh, vertical integration will go a long way to ensure Indonesian policymakers and the community about uh, food security issues. So I think uh, the Indonesian project, as it, uh, uh, as it goes forward from here, for another, for another 50 years, uh, has a uh, as difficult a task before as it has in the beginning, and that is to how to, uh, how to describe, how to advocate to uh, Australians and Indonesians, uh, uh, all the to governments and communities in general, about the advantages that can be found in working together much more closely uh, in the economy and looking for the the region. So, congratulations to all those who are uh, involved in the project. I think it's uh, a great project. I have to say, one of the few one of the few continuing uh, areas of uh, academic publication that I've lost to read. Um, so, uh, that's a long progress I had. So, uh, I look forward to the uh, publications in the future and continuing our support for it. So, 